point presentation which i would pull up and then kick off and i sincerely apologize guys uh, because of fire accidents or something in us we can't really uh, really do anything about it i went to office and came back and right now we'll we'll go with this uh, session data warehouse what it is a data warehouse is what we have to understand now i'm going to add a little humor and I would add little glamour even to the database. Let us see what I mean by that. You know, guys, I have learned this from a very old school tech, uh, old school technology or, or uh, methodology. My teacher used to teach me uh, not mathematics in the form of mathematics. See, she will ask you to uh, relate it to your real time instance. I give you 10 rupees, go in a shop, buy whatever the goods you want. How much is remaining? Then we will say four, four rupees. So she will ask me each item, how much does it cost? This is how I learn mathematics. So it becomes easier when you relate yourself to the real world and understand any concept. Because the concepts are, you know, theory is always boring. No one wants to keep listening to, uh, to tons of uh, audio. There are people who are visualized. They want to see things happening and then they can remember it. So I would try to make it as much as possible, as creative as possible, and let us see how it works for you, the concept of data warehousing. What is a data warehouse? Does anyone of you have an idea what is a data warehouse? See, you are looking at an uh, architecture that I have put together, uh, how we can go ahead and build a data warehouse. First, let me tell you a story. The story would be very much interesting. No business in the world so far has started all at a time with a data warehouse concept in it, with a CRM, with a ERP. No business in the world ha would have started like that. Day to day, they keep on inventing new technologies, and the and the uh, and the enterprise uh, people they will try to use these technologies. It's not like these computers existed before business. The data existed before business. The computers and the data are being like used in a better way just to make the business happen, just to be competitive. Let us say, I would go with a small story as I mentioned. So let us go with a small story as I as I'm uh, talking to you. Let, let us say one of you have started a business, or I generally go with a uh, wonderful uh, regional movie story. You know how a regional movie story happens. There would be an orphan, uh, orphan uh, child. He is bought, born and brought up in a slum. From the slum, at the end of the at end of the movie, you you will see him the the don, who has like hundred people around him with a huge building with a, with a, with 10 15 uh, black gods around him or, or we should not call black gods so we we should tell them as bodyguards so around him how this happens the movie miracle in the same way the data warehouse also happens business business exists even before the computers are being invented there is tons of data that exists even before the computers are born so forget about all these technologies Flat files is something which is the basic thing where you can store data. How does a flat file look? We will see what is a flat file. Forget about flat file. Look at your own notebook. We used to write, uh, write a diary. We used to make note of, uh, ask your mother. She used to make note of everything on a, on a, piece, a piece of slate saying, my monthly income is this, let me plan the budget, how much I should spend on groceries, how much on rent, this is all data. 
So the amazing way to access the data is a database. If you store that in a database, you don't want to go through 100 pages of history just to reach the point how much the husband has spent to buy a beer. You directly query the database saying select star from so and so or select so and so person's name, my husband's name. How many beers does he have this month? It, it picks up and gives you an answer. So if you want to refer it to a book, into an unstructured data format, it is going to be really tough. And it makes the business as a challenging thing to do to address. So let us start the story like this. My hero is now is born in a slum. He has, he has no education, nothing. He started as a layman. He started a, a pickle shop. So he wanted to keep selling the pickles. So he was on, uh, in a slum in a small hut where he used to uh, uh, buy his raw material, put it there, cut it, cook it, and then sell it. Then he used to make note of every everything. Okay, I have in I have purchased so and so thing one liner, and I have uh, sold so and so thing. End of the day, what is remaining? That's how he started. And later on, one other day, he has started a shop. Wow! He reached the next step into the business. The shop will grow no no more than in ten or five years. He would be a a multimillionaire like the Indian cinema. So the multimillionaire now has shops across the world. We'll, I mean, just for keeping it humorous, we would take the example of uh, of our uh, uh, Priya Pickles. Priya Pickles, the person started on a bicycle and has reached, made the world wonder. Now, well, every part of the nook and corner of the world is is very well uh, known for uh, Priya Pickles. Everywhere you get that. So forget about the front part of it. See the behind part of it. It is what is going to talk is data. He would have invested like 100 rupees to start his business, and now he is a billionaire with, with, uh, with business across the globe. So all we have to understand is data. So the one piece of, of uh, record that he would have created 20 years back in a flat file making a note is now is being transformed into data warehouse. Why? that we are going to see. So this transition, how would, would it have happened? Like if you look at the sources, guys, in the beautiful diagram or the picture I have put here. So he would have started with, with nothing. And then he would have started with a small Oracle database or a MySQL database or a SQL Server database. He started using computers, flat file, XML file. Finally, an SAP system. Forget about SAP system, which is an ERP system only if you have planned you'll people will start using it and one other thing i noticed in the powerpoint let me go and uh, uh, change it uh, because i don't want it to be playing uh, by itself it is not allowing me to play myself uh, play it by myself and uh, let me just adjust it it is a very small setting here um, the powerpoints should be in my hand i it should not control me so let me just do that Okay, the class is completed. I have run the all 25 slides. We are good to go. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. So I come back here. Uh, just bear with me a moment. We go to the, the page. Yeah, here. So the world would have started very simple. We are the ones who inv invented all these technologies and, and almost put our, our life into uh, a, a turmoil. So let us see how uh, we build a data warehouse. So eventually, when Ra, when uh, a person would have started Priya Pickles, he would never had Oracle database, MySQL, or SQL Server. He would have started with a very small flat file, which is every day making notes of it. Then you know the business went on a little bit more, so he started using a computer where he has a small database. Let us call it as a MySQL database, or or even we can call it as a Microsoft Access database. After then, he started building a web application. You know, Microsoft is popular for its SQL Server database. So he has some data. The customer information he stored in SQL Server. And then all the orders that he's getting every day, he stored in SQL database. 
all his products, what he manufactures, the pickles he manufactures, he has put it into the Oracle database. And finally, he has some other data from previous business which he has in flat files and XML files. Forget about SAP. We will come to SAP a little later because right now, yes, he would have even the SAP database. SAP is not a database. It's an application and so I ask you to keep it uh, for later uh, usage. And you know, the data keeps flowing like this. And he wants to build a data warehouse, let us say. After he gets all this data, third party data, you know, after all in the business world, you are not only the one who will rule the entire world. There are many distributors who will take your pickles and sell them. When they sell them, they are going to send you some data saying, okay, Mr. X, I have, I have purchased like uh, uh, a ton of pickle from you. I have sold half ton of it and remaining half ton is, is there with me uh, in, uh, uh, in my warehouse. Warehouse is not the data warehouse, it is the go down. When the data, everything is moved into the data warehouse, you see it has blown up like a cancer cell because no one tried to uh, hold it tight, no one organized this data. And finally, because of the cloud world, I would have implemented a, even a cloud CRM solution. All the campaigns I'm conducting, all the contacts that are generated from each campaign, all the accounts that have been created also has to move into data warehouse for me to understand how many customers I have today. How many orders did I process today? How many pickles did I sold today? Everything has to be moved into data warehouse for further analysis. So how would we do it? How would we achieve the target? Very simple. We are being innovative. The IT engineers being very innovative and they constructed a data model that it can answer any kind of a business question. What is a business question? We are going to see what is a business question in a few more moments. In the next slide, you'd see that. Why we need this data warehouse? I will answer all your questions. First, do you understand that we have more than one sources and why does more than one sources come up as? Each database and each application is good at something. There is no one application in the world that can take care of every of the business, business requirements. So there are several companies who work, they build a CRM solution, a ERP solution, or a HCM solution, HR solution. Uh, they are, there are like tons of applications. So we would have eventually, while going, growing with the business, we would have also uh, start, uh, start investing on all these technologies. Finally, you know, when the, the CEO wants to look at a small report, he doesn't get a report directly from these source systems. I would say why he doesn't get it in the next slide. So let us start first understanding if you are relocating soon, I asked you a question, how do you plan? Because why I talk about relocating soon is, after all, you are going to get the data from your source systems, these six source systems into the target system that is our data warehouse. Let us relate it to your real time, uh, real time uh, uh, scenario or, or your day-to-day -day life scenario. Forget about business. Forget about, uh, forget about a, an enterprise. Let us think as a person. You are now planning to relocate. Let me ask you a question. What is your plan? How would you plan to relocate? So go for it. You take your choice and then tell me. One of you take, take a chance and then tell me how do you plan to relocate? I want that information now. So who wants to uh, take the chance here? Yeah, uh, can I can I say something? Go ahead. Yeah, if at all I am planning to relocate, first I would check like uh, what all my uh, dependencies are here in the present location. Like I have to uh, cut off the lease for the uh, apartment and uh, and any other uh, the. Any other places, like any other dependencies, which uh, depend upon my location first. So okay, and then I would start thinking of what items I have to, uh, like you know, take off to the new location, and what items I must not take off, and uh, what are what are uh, in, involved in the traveling purpose along with me, and what are uh, coming on a truck. So I would take all the necessary things and uh, uh, jot down a list of things and uh, uh, go for the action item. And 
and i would think of like where we are going uh, that place like you know uh, we will uh, we will set up a like you know a time like whether we are going a speci- in a specified time whether we are going and like is it um yeah like that's it we we, we yeah we'll i got you all these necessary precautions and we'll go yeah and that's it uh uh-huh. i got it so there are few key keywords in what anudeep has spoke so far he told like he would check for the items in his own apartment that he is trying to move out from and he told he would look for a truck to move these items and he told he will make a list of the items and finally he told he would look at the yeah what items i have to take and what items i i i would have to leave or uh, throw them into garbage because i cannot move everything from the old place so we will take a two minutes uh, uh, take two approaches to understand the requirement here you know it can be any business forget about business the first thing is talk to your homemaker who is in your in your home she knows what is what is what and where is what take a quick look at each room put few numbers on your paper which means it is a data driven approach which means as anudeep mai select a mode of uh, of movement i mean you can carry it manually which means you engage your poor friends over the weekend uh, moving come and help me they can carry it for you or rent a medium sized truck and make more than one trip is that right depending upon the truck and depending upon number of items you have you have to make more than one truck one trip right okay and then rent a big truck that can move all at once you don't want to do one, more than one time so rent a big truck and move which means if you are relocating from texas to california you don't want to make two round trips to california texas to get all your items so which you you rent a big truck and move here and then hire a few laborers get a get a ceiling tape get a moving box get a dolly you all need this right these are the list of the items that you need to purchase for you to for your move to happen and then segregate the items important unimportant electrical appliances wooden fragile important but not urgent good to have waste and useless these are the categories you will see now you will go and relate in the data warehouse why am i telling this these are all the different dimensions of a data warehouse which means you are prioritizing what you have to move what you not don't want to move if you are always moving from texas to california would you mind to get a dustbin that is sitting there and you don't have more room would you mind uh, to to get an uh, useless a useless uh, uh uh thermocol box which you have put in there and it doesn't fit into the truck because the moving is expensive than uh, leaving it there you know you can buy a new one here so depending upon that you categorize it and then what if your brother wants to stay in the same home ha oh, you always have family you are moving from texas to california he says okay let me come there brother i want to stay with you okay take him how about if your parents join you how about your in-laws join you consider all the scenarios and plan for the relocating from an apartment to a single family home now you will not think about one more apartment you'll say okay i have my parents i have my in-laws i have my brother coming so let me take a single family home your apartment is now going to be transformed to single family home now keep this picture in mind and then go to the next slide where you would understand why we need to relate them how they fall into the same bucket relocating is nothing but moving from one database to other other database for me a data warehouse or a legacy system both are databases only a database can store and uh, uh, store data so whether it is a legacy system or a data warehouse still both are required for data the purpose of them would be different so let us try to compare between an apartment home and a database this is how an apartment layout will be this is how exactly a database will be do you see a similarity yes 
Each apartment, call them as each table that I'm showing you in the database. And each path, uh, path that you are making, uh, making uh, movements between, uh, between one home and other home, you call it the same connection between the database, which is the referential integrity, the path, how you connect by primary key, foreign key. So the database and apartment uh, complex goes in parallel. Relate your mind to that. Then you would understand. There are hallways to move between one, one floor and other floor. There are staircases. There are elevators. They are the connection points. In the same way, you have in the database primary key, foreign key relationships. You have referential integrities. You, uh, I mean, no one can enter into apartment. So which means every apartment has a key. In here, we call it as a primary key constraint, and unique key constraint, a check constraint. These are all the constraints. However you are relating database to the apartment, that is the reality. Relate in that way so that you understand every magic of the database. Whatever you have in your apartment, it is exactly the same. So now from the apartment complex, let us move into your, your uh, single bedroom apartment. You see each, each uh, one bedroom home will have a kitchen, will have a living room, will have a bedroom, will have uh, a bathroom, will have a storage. Each of them is a different data type. Call them as different data types, which means in a restroom, you can't put a couch. In a living room, you can't put a grinder or a mixer because they have to go into certain, certain um, uh, uh, rooms. I mean, you know how to make decisions. You are smart enough, right? In, this, in the database world, in a table, you have to decide whether you want to keep numeric values or you want to keep character values, or sometimes the storage unit kind of thing. You keep raw data because you don't know how to categorize them, so you put in the storage. So database has all this. It has several different database types, I mean data types. So the data types are nothing but character, number, whole number, raw, blob, C lob. These are all different uh, different data types. Like in mathematics, you have you'd have so far come across whole number, real number, integer, and then uh, character values, and then formulas, all that. To store each of them, database has a different data type. So that's how I relate an apartment with the database. Now we come to the retail sale, guys. When you look at the retail sale, you'll understand how each of them is being constructed. Each database, what does it require? Retailing is a classic example uh, used to illustrate dimensional modeling. We need to understand the dimensional modeling, which means let me again ask you a question here. Now you are planning to move into a single bedroom apartment, sorry, into a single family home from a single bedroom apartment. You have to go and see the dimensional model. The architecture of the building is different, is it not? In an apartment complex, there are, there, let us look into your own apartment complex. You all live in a single bedroom apartment or a double bedroom apartment. You have a common pool. You have a common wash area. You have a, a parking area, a designated uh, parking area for all of you. And, and there are like 100 families living in an apartment. But a single family home is, it is, belongs to only one family, not 100 families. You have more than one one. Uh, uh, what we can say, one person staying in it or his relatives staying in it, which means they are falling into a different architecture related at the building level. You will see if, if five families has to relocate from five different apartments into one single family home, there is a dimensional model change. You tell me, one of you take a, take a chance and tell me, how would you like your single bedroom apartment to be? And how would you like a single family home to be? Then we can relate what is the difference between a database and a data warehouse. Who want to take the opportunity to, uh, to uh, talk about your own single bedroom apartment and a an, uh, single family home? So last time uh, Anudit took the chance. Now Arvind, go for it. Um. So, uh, so Ganapati, you want to know how the apartment looks like, or uh, what are the things I yes, need at the apartment? Your own single uh, single bedroom apartment. You just tell me what are the components there, and we will talk about a single family home, and we will see what your expectations are. Okay, in typically in an apartment, uh, basically we have the living room, 
uh, and then the kitchen and then the two two bedrooms and the and the the bathrooms you know so uh, that's what i would typically look uh, for an apartment okay okay so I, now you will go to the single family home how would you want your single family home to look like okay the single family home you know it should uh, first of all uh, i should have uh, no separate garage uh, for mm -hmm. and then a living room a family room mm -hmm. um a kitchen you know so probably a, a three three or four bedroom with a master bedroom that's um, where it is something new rest hall was common right now you told three or four bedroom something new yeah then So then I mean, each the, bedroom will have each bathroom, right? Each bedroom will have an each, each bathroom. Each bedroom will be having each bathroom. You know, it would be, you know, uh, the the space is more than what it is, uh, what I get in an apartment. I would have uh, my own uh, lawn area and uh, probably a play area. And um, if it is, if if there is a basement, then you know I can have a an entertainment room. So. So your single family home is more like a luxurious place for you. You can do whatever you want. Whereas in an apartment, if you create nuisance, the next door person will come and hit you, right? And you can't really think about an apartment living comparing to the single family home. Which means a single family home is your independent uh, property. So data warehouse is an independent property for a business entity. no one else is going to come in without your permission whereas the other one is kind of just a storage when you are working in a downtown you can't have a single family home there you rented an apartment and you started uh, working there it is like that whereas single family home it is in a little bit of outskirts where it is a huge huge place you are started living but you will have to understand one thing in common four bedrooms are should be accessible to the same living room right yes that's where the catch is now you would look at the dimension model you would understand what a dimensional model of a data warehouse will look like comparing the dimensional model or you can you can say uh, a database model uh, in any any legacy system we are going to compare that now so we begin by discussing four step process of designing dimensional models we explore dimension tables in depth including the date dimension that will be used repeatedly you know date is a mandatory where whether you are in uh with uh, uh, like a single uh, single bedroom apartment or a single family home time is constant right so that that would be one of the very important things as part of our uh, data warehouse concept it is one of the dimension so we all discuss about uh, we are, we also discuss about degenerate dimension snowflaking surrogate keys these are all technical terminology guys when you talk in a data warehouse language you would keep hearing about these dimensions snowflaking surrogate keys well, i would tell you what those are we can easily relate it with with our uh, with our day to day life and understand the warehouse so chock full of fundamentals in this session that will uh, that will require to start working as a data warehouse engineer you will have lot of fundamentals so now you look at this particular small dimensional model in between you have a pos retail sales transaction fact and around it you have product dimension promotion dimension date dimension and storage dimension now you relate your four bedroom single family home it is going to look exactly like this if you transform into a home and between is the living room and you have your four bedrooms connected to each other right so it is a common a common place for everyone to access every day if you start making a note how many people are entering my home they enter into your living room before they go into the bedroom so it is the dimensional model which we are going to look at so relate it i mean i don't need to be really really uh, do a spoon feed you can relate it this is how a retail data model is going to look like a basic retail data model so we are going to build that in today's session first we'll have to understand the architecture only then we can start a uh, building it i mean a logical model and a physical model so let us look at it logically how we can build this and then we will go ahead and build the physical model using the etl tool i mean there are dimensional tools also but why i say etl tool is finally we will be building this data mart using our etl tool so 
why do we need a data warehouse? That is the first important question I, I have put to everyone. Like here, when you look at this particular one, like why do you need a single family home was being answered. Because you have more than one person coming into uh, coming and living with you, you need a data warehouse. Uh, sorry, you need a single family home. In the same way, we have to understand why do we need a data warehouse. Here is the question for you, and you are the one who will decide.